Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Here in the beautiful Garage Gym and here to talk about and give you ideas on how you can use your gym more. Here's the reality. You spend a ton of money on your Garage Gym, hard earned dinero. Why would you not try to use your gym more? And this is coming from a person who has had many gyms and has used them over the course of a decade Monday through Friday, every day, without fail. Well, I've probably failed a few times, but I've used my gym a lot. And some of the things I've realized and just culminated from other people online are some hacks on how I can use my gym more. This is the reality. I don't have a ton of extra time to train, unfortunately. There was a time when I was a younger coop where I lived in the gym. I spent way too much time in the gym. I did, you know, it's like you go to the gym or go to the garage gym, like you spend like three, two, three, four hours out there. When I had a garage gym at my old house, when I didn't have kids, we'd have like a fire outside. You drink brews with the bros after lifting. Your session would take just hours. Unfortunately, because I have four kids, jobs, mortgages, just too many responsibilities, I don't get to spend as much time in my gym as I'd like. But I still want to train every day to make my body and my mind better. So what I found is removing friction and creating hacks so I can get more efficient with the time I use in my gym. So today, after culminating a few that I use regularly and don't even realize were hacks, but like they truly are, I wanna give you some advice on things that I do and things that I see other people do that you should apply to your training so you can use your gym that you spend a whole lot of money on more often and more effectively. Let's do it. All right, some of these you may already do. Some of these, for some of you, will be brand new. So just hear me out on some of these, and it depends on the type of training and your location. So this first one is one that I see recommended all the time and something I used to do. This is specific for those that live in a colder environment or they train out in their garage in the winter and don't have a bunch of heating, and that is taking the equipment that you use most often and putting it inside at night when you're not using it so that when you do come out to use it, it's actually a temp you can use. Most of the time, a lot of people are using barbells. It's like the most effective way of training. And it's, I, honestly, I think it's like, it's the ultimate training device for the cost. I don't think there's another piece of training equipment that for the cost is a higher value to you. Like they're just so great. Talked about them all the time. And we know most people in our community, they're training with barbells. So barbells in the winter suck though, because they're very cold. And if you have a uninsulated garage or you're training in your basement that's uninsulated, or maybe even training outside, wherever you're training, if you're training in your home and it's not conditioned in the winter months, especially for me here in the good old Midwest, it gets really freaking cold. And the barbell gets very cold, honestly to the point to where it's like not even like fun to use. So instead of wearing gloves, which I don't love gloves while training. Normal gloves would probably not even help that much. You'd have to get like literal mittens to keep your hands warm. What I suggest doing is bringing your barbell inside. I don't know if you've ever seen those goop balls that they like their barbell so much that they'll put it in the back of their car and take it to the gym. <laughs> have you seen, like there are people that do that. Like there's memes that made them out. Like people love their barbells. They can't use the commercial gym barbells. They can't afford a home gym, so they'll take their barbell with them in the car. If they can do that, then you can easily, if your spouse will allow you, bring it inside and keep it warm. There's companies that make barbell warmers that like plug in, they're like heated blankets. That's another option. You go with that, or you could go with a literal heated blanket, wrap it around. But the easiest option, I think, is getting your barbell and taking it inside. Honestly, if you did that and maybe brought your like adjustable dumbbell handles inside, things like that, that would probably cover you for the majority of equipment that you're actually touching. So it's just not frigid cold. Give it a shot. Okay, the next one is also for heating and that is to automate as much of your heating, your lighting, your cooling, everything in your gym as much as possible. My house is not a fully smart house, but I do have smart features. I've started to add more and more. There are people that like, they 
geek out on this stuff. I'm looking at one over here on my right. Like just all the different things that you can do to automate your home. But the same thing can be said for your home gym. Right now, I have two heating units for Mr. Cool. They're the DIY units. They're mini split. They have a condenser outside with a heat pump and then an air handler on the inside. And it's a nice balmy 63, 64 degrees in here. This is what I keep it pretty much in the winter, just all around. But one reason I like these units is I can automate them on a schedule. So I can control them from my phone when I'm inside so I can set it up so I don't have to come out, which is a small thing. But I can also put them on a schedule so that when the days that I know I'm training, which is Monday through Friday at 5 a.m., I can have them at the temperature I'd like and then not being used on the weekends because I don't want to waste electricity and spend extra money. Those sorts of things are very nice. On the idea of the mini split, something I found for these, they are more efficient when they're running more often. So I only turn mine off on the weekend. Originally what I would do is I would turn them off like every day after I was done using them, but it actually wastes more electricity that way than keeping them running. They're very efficient if you keep them running. So just something I found from one of my buddies that's HVAC technician. Also the lighting. Behind me, you see a bunch of lighting. The lighting that I use on these dumbbell shelves are from a company called Philips Hue, and they're completely automated on a system. They're Wi-Fi bulbs. So I set them on a schedule. When I know I'm working out, they turn on. This isn't like a requirement, but it does make it so there's light on when I come into the garage. It's just inviting. It's like, ah, I really like being out here. I trained like this for a long time, so you don't have to have something like this. But it is nice to have something where it's like, it's inviting, it's nice when you come out to it, it's ready to go, versus having to set all this stuff up when you're gonna use it. There's so many parts of the gym that you could automate, including your training program, that would be very nice and allow you to use it more without having to worry about all this extra stuff. Okay, here's one that's more practical for your training. This is one that I've talked about in the past. I got from somebody else and I really like this idea. You're using your squat rack and this isn't a commercial squat rack anymore because it's in your home. And so you can customize it how you'd like. If you bring out a Sharpie at a commercial gym and start marking locations on the uprights, they're probably not gonna like you. But because it's yours, you can do that. So an idea that you could do is take magnets, you can ride on them and mark the locations where you use the J cups every time you lift. If you have multiple J cups, you could do like I do and just place those in multiple locations. I use a different location when I'm benching and when I'm front squatting, or I use a different location when I'm front squatting versus when I'm using say a camber bar or a Mars bar or something that has a different camber and it starts out lower. So one way to make your time more efficient and not have to like, what number was I on? I don't remember. You just mark a location where you're lifting. That way you know that's where the bar goes whenever you're doing that type of movement so you can use it every time without having to think about it. It's your squat rack, customize it to your needs. Another one I found that I do every time now is I set up my equipment for my workout on the previous day's workout. So the reason I do this is I don't need to put all my weights away. My kids come out here and play. I've got like monkey bars. It, it's just like another part of our house. So I don't leave a ton of weights out, but if I'm doing landmine, for instance, the next day, my previous workout, I will look ahead because I follow a program and most people do. I'll see what I'm doing and then I'll set that up. So if I'm doing landmines the next day, I'll just take a bar and put it in the landmine holder and then whatever weight I'm using from the previous day or equipment, I'll put away. This makes it really nice so that when you come out, you're just ready to go. When I come out to work out, I do not want to think about setting up my equipment. I don't want to like put everything, I'm just ready to work out, I have to be efficient with my time, and then I want to get out. This is a way that you can quickly, after you're done working out and you're cooling down, put all your equipment away and then put up the equipment or leave out the equipment that you're gonna use on your next workout. I'm telling you, this is a process where it'll save you quite a few minutes each workout and over time it can save you quite a bit of time. It also makes it really nice so when you get out, you know all you gotta focus on is getting the work done. Okay, now on that same note, one thing I see more often because we have tons of cool toys is lots of people making these really complex workouts and like training setups. I don't know if you've seen these and there's some really cool hacks, but using jammer arms for hack squats, using jammer arms for all these weird combinations, setting up all these crazy leg press, all these contraptions so you're using the versatility of your equipment. Number one, I think that's really cool and that's part of the hobby of the training. So if you really like doing it, 
go ahead and do it. But I will say if doing that sort of thing prevents you from training more often, it's not a good thing. You know what I mean? Like if it causes you to spend a ton of extra time and that time could have spent on actually doing the work versus setting it up because you don't have a ton of time for training, I don't think it's worth doing that. Like you should really focus on getting your training done. And if you have extra time, then do the setup. So one thing that I think is a good idea is simplifying your training. So I simplify my training, not so that I'm never doing a ton of versatile stuff. I'll do something that's like fun to use the versatility of the equipment, like once a workout or once a week, rather than every movement I'm doing requiring like five to 10 to 15 minutes of setup. So overall, a hack to use your gym more is to simplify your training. One reason I really like my garage gym is because I can use it for more things other than training. And one way that I use mine is I use it to work from home. Because of the work that I do, I can work from my home, which is very nice. There are more people today working from home than probably any other time. I mean, maybe people, more people work at home during the pandemic, but previous to that, I would say today, more people are working at home. And one thing that I really like is having equipment out in the gym that I can use while working just to like increase my heart rate and just move more often. So one thing that I've done that I would recommend to other people if you have the means is getting a treadmill with a large desk in front of it that's standing so you can walk during your meetings, you can walk while you're doing work. I found this just a huge benefit to get steps in each day. I recommend people get at least 10,000 steps a day. I think it's a great baseline for people to get moving more. People are always thinking like, oh, I gotta go running. I gotta do all this intense conditioning. I'm telling you, if you wanna get lean, one of the ways is just to burn more calories and walking is a low impact way of doing that that you can do for your entire life, really no matter what your fitness level is, and it's not gonna affect your recovery from your normal heavy training that you do. So I highly recommend using your gym if it's conditioned for more than just working out, using it for working out of. So like getting a desk and then using some of the equipment. When I went to Marcus Philly's garage gym, he had a bike erg that also had a desk set up on top of it. He had an assault runner that had a desk set up on top of it. The reason was because he took meetings and did his work while he was getting different steps in or cycling. I think it's just a great idea to use your gym more. So why not just take your facility you're already using and just be able to use it more often and this is one way you can do it. Okay, I would guess that many of you are using some form of liquid while you're training. So whether that's a protein shake, pre-workout, I, I don't know, electrolytes, BCAAs, EAAs, like there's just tons of supplements that people use. Mine are pretty simple. I use this thing called Element, which is a, an electrolyte blend basically. It's really kind of just expensive salt. And then I'll also use protein afterwards. One thing that I found that is just nice to do is similar to setting up my equipment for the next day's workout on my previous day, I will basically fill my water bottles, whatever I'm gonna use, or my blender bottles, and I'll put them in the fridge so they're cooling, and then all I have to do is pour the powder in them when I wanna use them. Again, this is a minor one, but all of you guys are using liquids. And this is just another way where you're already doing this thing. You might as well just have it ready to go at the temperature you'd like, if you'd like it cool, so that when you're done with your workout, or when you wanna start your workout, rather than thinking, oh, I gotta go fill this up and do all this, it's already ready to go, you can just grab and get to work. Similar to setting up your equipment prior, I think this is something that a lot of people do, is I put my training shoes out in the gym so they're just there when I wanna use them. Some of this stuff is kind of OCD, but I think it's nice to plan so you can actually do the things you wanna accomplish. Putting your training shoes in the place you're gonna work out is very similar to having the equipment there when you're gonna work out. So rather than going inside, looking all around, where's my shoes? You can just have your shoes ready to go. You come out, take your slippers off, and insert them into your shoes. Same thing for like your Olympic lifting shoes. Like just storm out in the gym. I'm never going on a date in my Olympic lifting shoes, which by the way, I had a buddy one time, the first time I met him, he was wearing Adidas weightlifting shoes with jeans. And I asked him, I said, dude, why are you wearing weightlifting shoes? He said, these are weightlifting shoes. I just thought they looked cool. I could not believe it. But I personally, and I hope none of you are, wearing your Olympic weightlifting shoes while you're going on dates, you're just using them to train with. So leave them in the place that you're training. So one part of training is planning when you're gonna train and how often. And this is something that I've just found a benefit for me, I've recommended it to other people, and they found a benefit in their life too, is I really like training on a consistent basis 
every week. And I love training every weekday, taking the weekend off. And I'm gonna make a case for this. Optimally, there may be better ways to train. Like I've heard, you know, optimally, if you're just trying to like, just put on as much muscle as possible or something, doing like three on, one off, three on, one off, something like that, hitting body parts every 48 hours, that sort of thing. I've heard some of those arguments and there's some studies on them. If that's what you're just wanting to do is train absolutely optimally for the best muscle growth or performance. But I'm not a robot, I'm a human, and there's more than just me doing things optimally. I also have to think about the mental component and the motivational component. And so something I've found that works really well is having a consistent basis of knowing I'm gonna work out every day during the week. If there's a off day during the week, I've just found it's harder to get restarted. Like if I take off Wednesday, but I'm working out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, that Wednesday is actually not a good day to take off. Like it's just hard to get back in the gym. So I really like working out Monday through Friday and that's just the way it works. But I also like taking off Saturday and Sunday or just doing more like rucking, hiking, that sort of thing versus training in the gym on those days because when Sunday evening comes along, I've been training consistently for 10 years or more than that, but I've been training that long in my gym. I still get absolutely fired up and so excited about my workout on Monday because I've had that rest. One guy I've heard talk about this is an Olympic speed skating champion. He's a world champion, world record holder. His name's Nils Vanderpool, and this is pretty cool. He came out with this book, this PDF guide on how he trains to be one of the best in the world. It's a really cool book, and he details all of his training. And one thing that he said was he trains five days on, two days off. And he's able to do that and be the best in the world at speed skating. And honestly, the best of all time. He's a world champion and record holder. And one thing he said was the reason he does that is not just because it's optimal, but because it gives him a mental break so he can do it long term. Doing something every day, like I used to train CrossFit, I train every single day, you just get burnt out but being able to do it consistently during the week and keep that rhythm going, you know you've got the weekend off, it's easy when it's like Tuesday and it's high volume and it's hard to know that, oh, I just got three more days and then I get two days off, or when you have those two days, you get excited to go back to training. I think it's a great rhythm. Obviously, there's other ways to train, but it's just something that I found beneficial that I can stick to and I have for a long time. Okay. There's some hacks, just some ideas that I think you can put into your training to allow you to use your gym more because you're spending so much time and thought into it anyways, you might as well maximize it so you can get more out of it. I'm sure you guys have other things that you do as well. I'd love to hear of them in the comments. If any of you would like to give me ideas or other people in the community on ways that we can use our gym more and level up together, let me know in the comments. This has been Coop from Garage Gym Reviews and we will see you next time. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,